Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel and today I'd like to discuss when you must have a neutral in a switch box and when you might not need a neutral in a switch box per 2020 NEC article 404.2C which does have code changes for 2020. So what I have going on here is I have the power coming into the light. Now this little light box is where the light goes and then we have a 12-2 width ground Romex cable going to the switch box. So that's our basic setup. Before we get our hands in there and everything though, I have the circuit breaker off, but I want to uh, double check with my voltage sensor. And uh, first thing you do is you test your voltage sensor on a known live circuit. And when you know it works properly, go ahead and test out your wires and double check and make sure the electricity is off. Safety first. Okay, so uh, like I was saying, the electrical energy comes in here in this case. This is a, the way we wired these lights uh, before 2011. After 2011, the codes were a little different, which we're going to discuss in a minute. But uh, before 2011, especially you see this in the 50s and 60s houses, the power almost always comes into the light say this is a light in a bedroom and it's in the ceiling and this uh, switch is right next to your door as you're coming into the bedroom the power wire would probably be up in the attic and it comes into the light box right here and here's your line wire that's your hot wire and here's your neutral wire right here so your neutral wire doesn't go down here to the switch box so anyway the hot line wire comes right here and it goes to a wire connector and it goes down here to this cable and it comes out here and you're probably saying well what in the world is a white wire doing in a switch box <laughs> and uh, that's one reason I'm making this video there's a lot of confusion about that so so the hot line wire comes here and then I'm going to color code this white wire and it goes down here and comes back out but color code it again so this is actually a hot wire it's bringing the electricity into this box all the time. This can be hot all the time as long as the circuit breaker is on. And then we have uh, the black wire goes back up through this cable here and it comes out right here. So you would hook the neutral uh, from the incoming hot cable right to your light. And this switched black wire that comes from the switch box, that's this wire right here, uh, you would also hook to your light. So you'd have a switch and one wire would be connected to one bronze terminal and the other wire would be connected to the other bronze terminal and the ground would be connected to the ground. Now, <clears throat> let me say, in older homes, 50s, 60s, and early 70s, a lot of times you won't even have a ground wire. It'll just be a white and a black and maybe they even got lazy and didn't uh, color code the white wire. You know, it might just be a white, a white and a black. This is a situation you see. And in the uh, 60s, 50s and 60s, these wires are actually cloth coated. The black gets lighter, the white gets darker, and they both look gray. You can't hardly tell the difference between the two. So and that's, that's what you see in older switch boxes. And then we have the grounds. We have the grounds coming in from this cable and then it, it goes out from here down to here. And I have another ground going from the wire connector to the cross piece. So this is the way it was done prior to 2011. Before we go to the code book, you'll need to know that a neutral wire in the code book is called a grounded circuit conductor. That's because the neutral wires go to the grounding bus bar on your main panel. They are grounded. This is a grounded circuit conductor. Your hot wire is called the ungrounded circuit conductor. It goes to a circuit breaker. It is not grounded. So the neutral is the grounded circuit conductor. The hot wire is the ungrounded circuit conductor. Now let's go to the code book and let's see uh, if this is still legal to wire this way and if so in what applications might it still be legal here we are at 
2020 NEC Article 404.2C. Switches controlling lighting loads. And it says the grounded circuit conductor. Now you need to know that the grounded circuit conductor is the neutral. The white neutral wire goes to the grounding bus bar in a main panel. So that is grounded. The ungrounded circuit conductors are, in our example, the black and the red wires, which go to a circuit breaker and are not grounded. So it says the grounded circuit conductor, they're talking about the neutral, for the controlled lighting circuit shall be installed at the location where switches controlling lighting loads that are supplied by a grounded general purpose branch circuit serving bathrooms, hallways, stairways, or rooms suitable for human habitation or occupancy as defined in the applicable building code. So basically, a switch box needs to have a grounded circuit conductor, which means that a switch box needs to have a neutral. Here are the five exceptions. One, where conductors enter the box enclosing the switch through a raceway, provided that the raceway is large enough for all contained conductors, including a grounded conductor. Okay, an example of that is EMT. If you've got your wires in EMT, uh, that can be an exception to this rule. Number two, where the box enclosing the switch is accessible for the installation of an additional or replacement cable without removing finished materials. Number three, where snap switches with integral enclosures comply with 202 NEC Article 300.15E. And here's a photo of a snap switch with an integral enclosure. Number four, where lighting in the area is controlled by automatic means. Number five, where a switch controls a receptacle load. So now we're getting into the part that's new for 2020. It says the grounded conductor shall be extended to any switch location as necessary and shall be connected to switching devices that require line to neutral voltage to operate the electronics of the switch in the standby mode and shall meet the requirements of 404.22. So here I have a picture of a Lutron timer and you see the middle wire is a neutral wire. Uh, that one needs a neutral wire so it's talking about devices like that. And here's the, the brand new uh, part for 2020 and it says exception. The connection requirement shall become effective on January 1, 2020. It shall not apply to replacement or retrofit switches installed in locations prior to local adoption of 404.2c, which is what we've been reading, and where the grounded conductor, as we talked about the neutral, cannot be extended without removing finished materials. The number of electronic control switches on a branch circuit shall not exceed five, and the number connected to any feeder on the load side of a system or main bonding jumper shall not exceed 25. For the purpose of this exception, a neutral bus bar in compliance with 200.2b and to which a main system bonding jumper is connected shall not be limited as to the number of electronic lighting control switches connected. Informational note, the provision for a future grounded conductor is to complete a circuit path for electronic lighting control devices. Knowing these exceptions can really save you a lot of time and money. So how does this new code exception apply to our example? Well, right here it says, and where the grounded conductor cannot be extended without removing finished materials. Well, in my example, there's no finished materials. So as I read it, with a strict interpretation of this code, I have to add a grounded conductor because there are no finished materials. 
perhaps you could argue with an, an inspector that you're doing a replacement or a retrofit. But if you've got the finished materials off, as I read it, you have to add a grounded conductor. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, I've replaced the old 12-2 with ground with a 12-3 with ground. So I took out the old uh, cable that was going from the switch to the light box and I replaced it. And uh, this way we can meet the modern code and uh, now I can install a device like the Lutron timer switch that uses a neutral. So we now have a neutral in the switch box. See, this is a 12-3 with ground. We've got three conductors. We've got two hot conductors, the red and the black. These are called ungrounded conductors. And we have one grounded conductor called the neutral. And we have the ground. So that's 12-3 with ground. And it comes up here. I have hooked the neutrals together. I didn't have to use the neutral as a hot wire this time. So I can have it as an actual neutral. And I'll take the neutral from my light and hook it right here. I have a, a three connector device here. And so that'll take care of the neutral for the light. And then this is the hot wire that comes uh, from the hot cable and it goes down right to here. Okay, so these two are going to be switched. So that when this um, switch is on, the red wire comes up here, it comes out here, and it turns on the light. So we got the, the neutral and the red uh, that will turn on the light. And then I have a spot over here for the ground. So it's, it's just like this. You take the ground, you put it right in there like that, and then you take the neutral, put it in right there like that, and you take the black, put it right in there like that. So the light is all hooked up. Okay, so I'm not going to be using the neutral right now, but it's available for something like a timer switch. Just put that back in the back of the box. Okay, so it's it's available. That that meets code if it's there. It's available. Okay, then we got the, the two hot wires. Put one over here and tighten it down securely. And tighten that down securely. So here we have our switch nicely installed with the brand new cable coming into it. That includes a neutral and we have turned on the circuit breaker and there you go look at that so that's the codes involved with having neutrals in your switch boxes I'll put links in my video description for the Wego lever nuts in the two three and five connector sizes as well as the multi-pack for the fight electric dimmable five watt LED light bulbs the Klein hybrid pliers, the Klein 1000 volt insulated 8 in 1 screwdriver set, the AC Delco digital torque wrench, and the Weha 1000 volt insulated torque screwdriver, which will help you out with the new terminal connection torquing codes, and the new Klein tool station backpack. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.